Okay, tonight we're going to be looking at exponential growth and decay. Exponential growth is when something gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, kind of like population, how it just keeps getting bigger. So that's like the graphs that we've been looking at, y equals to the x, stuff like that. Exponential decay is when stuff gets smaller, so for like half-life of uranium. All right, it's going to start out at this great radioactivity, and then as time goes on, it's just going to keep going down by certain units. So maybe keep dividing by 2, dividing by 2, all the way through. Okay, we're going to be looking at these certain things. At the top, you have all the different formulas that you're going to use. You will be giving those formulas on tests, quizzes, anything like that. You're not expected to memorize those. The only thing you know, have to know how to do is how to use them. But notice, C and both of them are initial amount. P is just like C. It's in the same kind of spot. It's also principal. Principal means the exact same thing as initial. It's just how much you start out with. R is the rate. Make sure you write it as a decimal, not a percent. So if it's 6%, Make sure you change 6% to 0.06 when you change an equation. Move your decimal over two spots. Do not forget to do that, otherwise it will come out incorrect. Now, this table, how interest is compounded? If it's compounded annually, then if you have a race that's done annually, is it only done one time a year? If you have semi-annually, then say like a semicircle. A semicircle is half of the circle, right? Well, yeah, so if a semicircle is half a circle, then it's two parts of a circle, so two parts of a year would be semi-annually. Then we have quarterly. Oh, how many quarters are in a dollar? Four, right, Taylor? Yeah. yeah. Taylor says, yeah. <laughs> She's in here, so I'm loading her. I don't know if that's called right. quarterly. Yes, that is correct. So if there are four quarters in a dollar, then there are four quarters in one single year. If we do it monthly, no, there's... 12 months in a year, so our n would be 12. Daily, assuming it's not a leap year, we're going to have 365 days in a year. So depending on what it says in the word problem, whether it's daily, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, will depend on what our n is that we use in that equation. Looking at number one, depending on what our formula says will depend on which formula we're actually going to use. So in number one, it says in 1980, the population of Warren, Michigan was about 161,000. Since then, the population has decreased about 1% a year. What was the population in 1990? So from 1980 to 1990, it looks like we used 10 years. And we are going to be using decay since our population decreased. Decreased tells us that we want decay. So we are going to be using the formula A equals C times 1 minus R to the T. So I want to know what C is. I want to know what R is. I want to know what T is. As you write this out, the better you write this out, the easier it will be to plug it into the equation. C is however much we started out with. Well, we started out with 161,000 people. Since then, the population has decreased about 1% a year, so our rate is 1%. Do not forget to change that into a decimal. So 0 0.01. And then from 1980 to 1990 was 10 years, so our T, or our time, is 10. So now it's just a matter of plugging it into the equation. So we have A equals 1611123, 1 minus 0 0.01 to the T is 10th power. And then, just plug it in your calculator. So we have... One six one. Okay, oh, yeah, zero. Hand yeah, zero. One two. Uh. Uh. Aha. One two three. Times one minus point zero one raised to the tenth power. So we have one hundred forty-five thousand six hundred five point five people. Well, since we can't really have a half of a person, we're just going to say one forty-five. What was it? Two, two, 605. 605. That will be our answer. Done. Okay, number two reads, the price of a new car is 18500 What will the car be worth in three years if the depreciation rate is 14%? Depreciation means to decay. So we know we are going to be using A equals... C, C, yeah, 
times 1 plus r to the t. I know c, it tells me, is 18,500. I know that r is 0.14 when I change it into a decimal. And I know that time is going to be 3. So when I plug into my equation, I have 18,500 times 1 minus 0.14 to the third power. Plug well, in some numbers into your calculator and you'll come out with 11.7670 point oops, 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 oops. Uh, uh, point zero four. So 11,767.04 cents. Number three, since 1970, the population of Virginia has grown. Already I see the word grown, so I know grown is going to be a growth equation. So I know I'm going to have A equals C times 1 plus R raised to the T. So now I need to know what C is, I need to know what R is, and I need to know what T is. Okay? Since 1970, blah, blah, blah an average rate of 1.015%. So my rate is 0 0.01015 when I convert it to a decimal. And in 1980, the population was about 4,651,000. So 4,651,000, one, two, three. What would the population be in 2020? Well, from 1980, when I know that population, to 2020, that is over 40 years. So I can plug these numbers into my equation and say A equals 4, 6, 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, times 1 plus 0 0.01015, 0 1, all raised to the 40th power. Plug in some numbers into a calculator, and you will come out with 6,965,961 people. Okay? Number four, the Owens family invested 4000 in the account paying 5% interest compounded monthly. How much money will they have in five years? Okay, so this is dealing with money. This is talking about compound interest. So I'm gonna have my formula, A equals P times one plus R over N, all raised to the NT power. So now I need to know what P is. Remember P is just the initial amount or your principal. R is rate, N is number of times compounded, T is time. So for my principal, I know I'm going to have 4,000 in my account. So I started with 4,000. Okay, paying 5% interest compounded, so 0 0.05 when I change it to a decimal. Over seven years, so time is seven, and it says it's compounded monthly. So if we go back to our table, we know that compounded monthly happens 12 times a year, so the n is going to be 12. And once again, it's just a matter of plugging in these numbers into our equation. So I have a equals 4,000, one plus, 0 0.05 over 12, all raised to the 12 times 7. You can simplify these numbers if you want to before you put it in the calculator, or you can just plug them in exactly how you see them. Either way, hopefully you'll come out with $5,672.14. Number five, the Jones family found an account paying 6.25 interest compounded quarterly. If they invest 7,500 into this account, how much money will they have in three years? So once again, this is a money problem. Somebody's be using the formula A equals P times one plus R over N, all to the NT power. So I need to know principal, I need to know the rate, the number of times compounded, and for how long. Well, I know they invested 7,500, so they start out with 7,500 at a rate of 6.25%, so convert it to a decimal, 0.0625 over three years, and it's compounded quarterly. There's four quarters in a dollar, so n will be four. Once I get to this point, all I have to do is plug in the values to my equation. So I have 7,500 times one plus 0 0.0625 divided by four, all raised to the four times three power. Again, simplify if you want to, or just plug it straight in your calculator how you see it. Either way, hopefully you'll come out to 9,000 $33.62. Yay! Okay, do not forget to write this down. I will be checking this tomorrow for a homework grade. 
So make sure you have your notes, give your homework a shot. I will be answering questions up to probably about 9.30 tonight. Well, bye!